Welcome to Night Hacking at the Javaland Conference. My name's Stephen Chen. And we're doing a motorcycle tour all across Europe, visiting different user groups and also doing interviews with interesting folks, um, such as Nicholas Regal. How yeah. are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> so uh, Nicholas is a community manager for Aldebaran Robotics. Exactly. Makers of the Now robot, also the Pepper robot. And we, we have a little friend here on stage with us. Yeah, I took now with me. So uh, you want to describe what our, what our friend is capable of? Well, <laughs> I, at least I can discuss about the, the hardware. Uh, so this is basically a robot. The idea is that we design humanoid robots. So they have a kind of human form factor. Yeah. Uh, in terms of sensor, what you can find on a robot such as this one, we have cameras on the, in the head, we have infrared. We have some tactile zones on the head. We have some speakers uh, in the ears. Oh, yeah, so I think this is interesting for folks. Why, why is there a camera pointing down? In fact, basically, the first client we had was the RoboCup, which is an organization that is organizing uh, soccer matches between robots. And they needed, at the same time, to be able to monitor the field mm -hmm. and look at the feet of the robot, so yeah. to look at the ball. the ball. So that's why we have the nice. cameras like that. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's a cool story about this. So the speakers here. Uh, this is also fun because usually when people want to say secrets to the robot, they talk to the speaker, <laughs> in fact. So that's fun for the, yeah, just to notice yeah. it. We got four microphones on the head that mm -hmm. are going to allow the robot to locate where the sound is coming from. Mm -hmm. We got a sonar here in order to detect obstacles, for example, when he's moving uh, all along. Um, we got an inertial board in the torso so as to, uh, he can keep his balance. And we also have a force resistive uh, sensors under the under the feet same thing okay. in order to so detect you can tell that standing and do balance with the um, pressure Ex exactly and then i saw i saw earlier i saw now walking on the the carpet here so what sort of surfaces is he okay on well usually flat surfaces at the moment uh, he cannot climb anything um, carpets are a bit challenging usually yeah. because when he's standing on one foot he tends to go uh, um, move a little bit or yeah, the weight is the not weight completely shifts. stable. Yeah, that's it. So some of the programs I think also rely on feet shuffling a little bit. What do you mean? So, some of the some of the different programs I've tried, like it tries to slide the feet. Yeah. And that on a on a on a rough surface, that it doesn't, doesn't work. work. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, no. I was thinking about lately. They did uh, an application inside of Aldebaran where you can change. Uh, the the surface like uh -huh. trying to uh, have it like uh, not being flat but oh, you get okay. to do this very slowly so yeah. that the robot adapts progressively yeah. but um, yeah usually flat things and that's the best we can do yeah. at the moment though we can climb stairs uh, the challenge being to go down the stairs for robots <laughs> in fact so <laughs> that's cool so what other what other sort of sensors and then you got uh, we got bumpers on the foot in case uh, you don't detect obstacles with the okay. sonars then you can use that and we got also tactile zones on the on the hand so he knows if you're touching it uh, that's basically that but uh, on top of the sensors, from a hardware point of view, there are also what we provide in terms of software. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we get cameras, but we don't just give you access to the raw video stream. We also have APIs that are going to be able to tell you immediately how many people are standing in front of the robot, the gender, or the mood, things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, I think that's the, the real value, is like the interaction and the APIs, which make it easy to script things and have communication we, and utilize the sensors. We definitely focus on... Uh, the robot is not focusing on performances. Yeah. We don't expect him to carry everything and do this kind of stuff. But uh, interaction is key for us. That's why uh, using the sensor in order to be able to really understand the context and behave accordingly is what makes sense and create the, I would say, illusion at the moment of intelligence in the yeah. eyes of the user. So um, you're, you're here at Javaland Conference. So what, yeah. are you, what are you talking to about people here at the conference? Well, uh, now is the first robot that we released on the market. But now uh, we also have Pepper, which was uh, developed for SoftBank in Japan. And that has been in Japan for uh, the last two years, but only in Japan. And we start selling it across, uh, across Europe and in the US. So we are also here in order to uh, showcase Pepper to yeah, uh, developers. In the keynote, Pepper showed up in the keynote. Yeah, actually, uh, Pepper was uh, one of the speakers at the, <laughs> at the keynote, so that's pretty cool. Uh, it brings some enhancement uh, compared to now in terms of size. Mm -hmm. And we also have a 3D sensor embedded on the robot, which makes it also easier in terms of navigation and things like that. So Yeah, and I think also the how, how the it's a different wheel design as well, right? It has the rolling yeah, wheels. We, we, we don't have legs uh, on paper, so the robot is really more stable, but it's still designed in order to fit into human environments. So yeah. that 
still cool for that. The thing is that since we don't have any legs, we've been able to stack batteries uh, inside of the base. So we have a longer autonomy for the robot. Yep. Uh, Pepper can operate for 12 hours. Oh, uh, that's really good. Whereas now it tends to run out of battery after one hour and a half. So <coughs> Yeah. But th it's the same kind of platform, the same OS running on it, and the same kind of APIs available. It's so can you use Java to script both robots, Pepper and now? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, I've been uh, doing a lot of uh, promotion so that we have an interesting <laughs> Java SDK. It's not completely perfect yet. There are still uh, some enhancements that, uh, that we could add. But basically, it's now Java compliant, and it's available to anyone. Uh, just by registering on our community website, you can download the tools and at least start looking at the kind of APIs we are providing for the, for the robots. Yeah. Any improvements since Java 1 last year? Uh, I think that we had a new version because we had a new uh, software version yeah. for the robot, but nothing like completely uh, changing the world uh, compared to what we had at Java 1. Okay, But cool. we had a nice award this year at, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. at Java 1. We've been rockstar yeah, for the... You were the first hands-on lab to receive a Rockstar Award, so congratulations. Well, that, that's an honor for us, <laughs> honestly, when I received the notification about that. I was yeah. the first to be surprised. I'm a bit sad that Pepper didn't receive the new award uh, <laughs> because he was the main actor of this, uh, of this workshop. Well, but that's maybe, maybe we can get that fixed. Ah, yeah. okay, so okay. I'll, I'll send you an email that. about that. that. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no, we've been very proud uh, about that, uh, proud of the... Uh, glad of the way that the community has been welcoming us and uh, the kind of products that we're putting on the market and the real interest that they have for robotics at the moment. Cool, that's exciting. And you're doing a lot of community work too. What else do you have plans? Well, at the moment, uh, we still want to attend a few events in order to present to the developers the technical uh, aspects of the, of the robots and how to program them. We, since we know that everybody cannot always attend these kind of events. We also try to connect with local communities. Yeah. We might be going on a, on a road show in the US and in Europe, visiting oh, some jugs. That, that sounds exciting. Well, more for me than so, for so my we'll, boss. We'll, but now, <laughs> we'll now drive the vehicle? Not yet, <laughs> but uh, he might be there in order to give you water in case you're thirsty or things like okay. that. Yeah, or, but, or uh, Pepsi. Or Pepsi, or Coke, Coke. Yeah. Coke. in that case. But uh, no, no, I, I will be on the road with both Pepper and, uh, and Nao. And well, we'll see what happens. Uh, usually, there are some great adventures uh, when you're on the road with robots. So, Yeah, no, that sounds exciting. So if there are any user group leaders watching our stream, this might be an opportunity. Yeah, anyone interested, basically, in maybe hosting us in order to discuss a bit about robotics. I know that audiences usually are interested in this kind of thing. So whoever would like to uh, host yeah. us and discuss about that, we'll be happy to do that with you. Yeah, that sounds awesome. All right, so thanks for the interview here well, at Javaland Conference. Nicholas and um, now are officially the last interview on the Night Hacking stream. So you can watch all of the recordings at nighthacking.com. And we want to thank you and everyone else who presented the past few days on the Night Hacking stage for, for giving some great, some great interviews. Thanks a lot. Thank and you. See you soon. Yep.